In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to an alternative method for extracting time frequency information from EEG data. This method utilizes the Hilbert transform, uh, which was developed by Hilbert, mathematician, uh, and uh, I guess he looked something like this. So the idea of the Hilbert transform is that uh, it's an alternative method for um, extracting the uh, the amplitude or the the magnitude and phase information from EEG data from which we extract our um, time frequency information. So you already know that we can take a, uh, a raw EEG time series, perform convolution with a complex Morley wavelet, and the result of convolution is a time series of complex dot products from which we can extract the projection onto the real axis, which is the bandpass filtered part of the signal, uh, the distance, the magnitude of the of the dot products of the distance from the origin to the dot product. Uh, and then if we square that, we get the power time series and the angle of this uh, vector with respect to the real axis. And that is our phase angle time series. And so it turns out that we can basically extract the same information using the Hilbert transform. Now, the idea of the Hilbert transform is that we start with our data in a uh, as as real valued data we start with real valued data which we can conceptualize as something that looks like this it's a cosine function remember that cosine maps onto the real part of the signal so we have cosine and some frequency and some amplitude and of course these can be varying over time uh, but just from a real valued signal it's not possible to um, to estimate uh, what the phase angle is or what the power is and so what we really need is a complex uh, sine wave or a signal that we can represent using complex sine waves like this. Um, so then this is familiar now. This is the uh, Euler's formula and the sine wave. So what we want is something like a e to the i 2 pi of t or a cosine uh, um, 2 pi of t plus i a sine 2 pi of t. Um, and so this is not the information that we get. So we only start with this real valued information. Um, but we want to be able to obtain uh, this, uh, this complex uh, sinusoidal representation in order to extract phase and power. Okay, so the Hilbert transform uh, allows us to do this. And the, the way that the Hilbert transform works is by uh, rotating the Fourier coefficients in this complex space, which converts the uh, real components into the imaginary components. And then we add the, the shifted Fourier co coefficients back onto the, uh, the original Fourier coefficients, and we take the inverse transform, and that gives us our, uh, our complex um, uh, analytic signal, which is going to have this form, because we will turn these cosines into signs and then add them back into the same signal. So we're going to see this in MATLAB in a second. What we do is uh, take the Fourier transform of the signal, rotate the Fourier coefficients, and then take the inverse Fourier uh, transform, and that gives us back a time series. And once we get back to that time series, then we can extract the phase and the real component and the power, just like we would with the uh, result of complex Morley wavelet convolution. Okay, so now we can take a look at this. Here in this first cell, uh, this is just illustrating one of the methods. Actually, it turns out this description I, I, I gave you for how the Hilbert transform works is, is one of the um, methods for implementing the Hilbert transform. It's not the only method. Um, so basically, we start with real numbers. Here we take the, uh, for, or sorry, random numbers. Uh, here we take the Fourier transform of that uh, random number sequence. This is where we create a copy of the Fourier uh, coefficients, and we identify the positive Fourier coefficients and the, uh, or sorry, the positive frequencies and the negative frequencies, because it turns out that those are rotated in different ways. Um, in the, the book, I get into this in a little bit more detail, uh, but actually I, I don't want to get hung up on the mechanics of it too much. You can read about the Hilbert transform in the book. You can read about it on many websites online. Um, and you can just inspect this code. The, uh, the main thing I wanted to illustrate with this is um, just that uh, this method produces the same result as the 
MATLAB function for the Hilbert transform. The MATLAB Hilbert function is um, in the signal processing toolbox. So if you do not have the signal processing toolbox, then you can basically just copy this code and uh, make your own Hilbert transform. Okay, so now I mentioned that uh, the idea is we can go from the raw EEG to this time frequency information via the Hilbert transform uh, instead of using complex Morley wavelet convolution. So that's what we're going to see here. So now we load in our sample EEG data. Uh, here we compute the ERP from one channel, 48, I think it's CZ, actually, I don't remember. Um, and then we just take the Hilbert transform of the ERP. And then what I'm going to do is uh, plot the, the time domain ERP, so the real valued ERP, the original signal, and these different uh, pieces of information that we can extract from the Hilbert transform, uh, just like with the, um, with the uh, complex wavelet convolution. All right, so first let's take a look at this. Here you see the ERP in blue. Um, and the real part of the Hilbert uh, transform in red. Now, of course, you don't see the blue line because it's uh, exactly overlapping with the red line. Um, and this shows you that the real part of the Hilbert transform is the same as your original data. This shouldn't be very surprising because the original data is a real valued signal. So when we extract the real part of the Hilbert transform, we just get the real part of the original signal and the original signal had no imaginary part so of course they are perfectly overlapping. Here in this middle panel I'm plotting the ERP and the uh, magnitude of the uh, Hilbert transform and we could square this to get the power and here we get the phase here so um, so I didn't uh, yeah so actually I did this is voltage or radians so the red is the phase. Now this doesn't look like what you would expect a uh, phase angle time series to look like, right? Because normally you expect these phase angles to go up and then they sawtooth down and it has this, yeah, this very regular um, sawtooth pattern. And here it just looks, you know, kind of ugly, actually. It, certainly you should be alarmed if you see a phase angle time series like this in your real data. The reason why this is happening is that the ERP is a very broadband signal. It's, it's not very well concentrated in, uh, in frequency space. And so the phase angles that we extract from this are not really uh, interpretable. So these are, you know, these are sort of valid phase angles, but they're very difficult to interpret uh, because we don't have a narrow band signal. Okay. And here, what I'm plotting in figure three is just the... Uh, the real part, so this is just the ERP, um, and also the imaginary part as a 3D line. So you could see this looked much nicer in earlier um, versions of, uh, yeah, when we've seen these kinds of 3D plots where you saw these nice sort of swirly features like this slinky that's going in and out over time, and spiraling over time. This one looks a lot um, uglier. And again, the issue here is the same, that the ERP um, does not have a very narrow band representation. Um, and so uh, so the, the result of the Hilbert transform is not really a very um, interpretable signal. Okay, and so this, uh, this leads us into the next lecture, which is going to be all about bandpass filtering. And so uh, the Hilbert transform is an alternative method to extract the complex components from a signal that you would use in time frequency analyses, uh, but you should really only use the Hilbert transform. I should say the result of the Hilbert transform is really only interpretable uh, and meaningfully interpretable when it's applied to narrow band uh, signals. And so generally we don't have narrow band signals from the start because brain activity has representations at multiple frequency bands. And of course, noise is, uh, is broadband. And so what you want to do is apply a narrow band filter to your data before applying the Hilbert transform. And that will be the focus of the next lecture.